For me, World Freedom Press Day is a chance for everyone, everywhere, uh, to look at the situation in their own country and ask themselves, how well are we doing? How good is our press? Is it doing its job? Now, it's very easy to criticise other countries. There are very good countries, and there are very bad countries in terms of press freedom, but really we have no control over that. We have some control over what's happening in our own countries. And I think everyone should take the day, take the chance of the day to look, to examine just how well uh, our own countries are behaving in terms of maintaining the freedom of the press, which is important to all of us. What could be used to assess the freedom of press? There are some uh, internationally accepted um, standards in which freedom of the press is uh, judged. There's lack of censorship, whether any body exists to step in first and say, no, you can't publish that, or yes, that's all right, you can, you can publish that. The press should be free from interference. No one should be able to, to stop you from writing something or try to influence what you say. Another aspect is access to information, because if we have no access to information, we can't really do our jobs properly. We need to be able to get official data and official reports and unofficial reports and from these draw conclusions and ask the right questions. So information is really, really important. And another one is the pluralism of voices. Everyone should be able to have their say. The more media outlets we have, the more voices we have. And it should not simply be powerful people who have access to the media. Everyone with everyone in society should be able to, to have their say and their point of view considered. Yeah. And what about the situation of press in Cambodia as you have been working here for quite some time in the country? Yes, I've been working for a total of three years now in, in two news outlets and I've seen it change. Uh, I came here first in 2016 and between then and now, there's been a very, very big change in the political uh, situation and the situation of the press. The Press Freedom Index puts Cambodia 147th out of 180 countries. Now, that doesn't sound good at all uh, from the outside. It's, it's not something the country should be terribly proud of. Uh, my experience has been rather better than that. I do find the press here very lively. Uh, there are some areas in which we uh, collectively don't press very hard. Politics for most outlets in Cambodia is a bit of a danger area and everyone tends to steer to steer clear of that. Now that has a couple of effects. One is that the journalists that I meet here uh, are very skilled and very good, uh, but not many, if any, have any experience of political reporting. In more, in, in countries with more press freedom, uh, the journalists develop a set of reporting skills particular to, to politics uh, and that allows them to scrutinise politicians very, uh, very thoroughly, very carefully and put, really puts them under the microscope. Those skills have not yet uh, developed among most Cambodian journalists and that's something I would like to see happen I don't think it will happen until the political climate changes, but uh, it means that the public is not well informed 
about, about political debate. There is not the kind of robust exchange of political views that you might get in a country with a freer press. Right. Why is it very cr crucial for Cambodia to enhance political journalism? I think at this stage in Cambodia's development, it is very hard for journalists to develop political reporting skills because the, the atmosphere is not right, the opportunities are not right. No one talks publicly about restrictions on journalism, but the rea reality is that journalists steer away from difficult political questions. Uh, they don't ask the questions. Uh, everyone I speak to, journalists, non-journalists, understands very clearly the political situation here. Um, but uh, there is not much discussion of it. People talk about it personally and in private. Uh, but there is not the kind of exchange of ideas and the detailed criticism and probing of politicians' actions and views that we need to make informed decisions about whether our political leaders are doing the right thing or perhaps not doing the, 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 not doing the right thing. Um, they are not scrutinized to the extent that they, they could be if the press felt that it, it had the freedom uh, to report without fear of consequences. All right, so uh, what is the key to improve the freedom of press in Cambodia? In Cambodia, uh, we have to think of three pillars of government. One is the constitution and the electoral process. The other is a free press. And the third is a free court system. Now, Cambodia has a model constitution. It's as good as any in the world. So we have no problem with our ability to run elections free and fair, ele fair elections. That's fine. We have a press which is well organized with well-trained journalists who know what they're doing. But the third pillar is where we need to make progress and that's the courts. Because courts also must be free of interference from governments and powerful vested interests. And this is where I think progress needs to be made. Because we know from political cases, we know from the prosecution of journalists, that the courts, them, that there is little faith, little public faith, that the courts will act independently and that they will not automatically take the side of the government. Now this is something that I think we should everyone in Cambodia should press for. It would involve a big culture change because there are links between government officials and the courts and the automatic assumption that the courts will take the government side is very, very damaging for the country. It's damaging for a few reasons. One, because it damages the freedom of the press and the ability of journalists to do their job properly. It's also damaging uh, in terms of economics and investment because investors have to be confident that if they have a problem, they can take it to the courts and the courts will give an unbiased judgment according to law. So I think there should be an alliance between industrial business interests and the press to make sure our court system is entirely independent. This will benefit business, allowing for fairer judgments, and will certainly benefit journalists 
and the press by allowing them more freedom to operate freely uh, without fear of legal consequences. And I think there is, the courts are the, right now are a big part of the problem. And there should be pressure on the courts to take a more robust and more fiercely independent stand when judging cases involving press freedom and political parties. As it is obvious that right now technology is infiltrating our society today and right now many of the journalists use the AI generated tool to help their work. So what is your take on the AI in journalism today in Cambodian society? AI, we're now at the, the forefront of AI. It's new, it's developing, and nobody knows very much about it. We don't know how it will develop or where it will go. It is now being used in some news outlets. I know of one which actually uses AI to scan government documents, pick out stories, and write them. These are small stories, not terribly important stories, but the principle has been established that this, this is now happening uh, and that AI is selecting stories and publishing them. It's on a small scale. In other cases I know of, AI is used as an editing tool. Uh, now this does sound a bit scary, it doesn't scare me too much because at the end of the day, AI is only one big database, one big processor. It can't do what journalists at the basic level do, which is go out and talk to people. It can't, I don't think it ever will be able to identify stories, think of story ideas, uh, interview uh, people in the street, crash victims, politicians, economists. Um, it will never be as good as the human brain for asking probing questions. So the basic function of a journalist to ask questions will never, it can never be replicated by AI. It doesn't worry me. It's a tool. We will use it, we will adapt to it, but it's not a threat. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. Sure.